Today I'm talking to Derek Moore, uh, the CEO at Coffee and TV. Hello, Derek. Hi, Nicoletta. How are you? I'm doing good today. Yourself? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you. Lovely. So we're going to talk about the success and happiness today. I'd love to hear your, your perspective on this. Where shall we start? Would you like to maybe share a little bit about yourself? Who are you and how was your journey in life so far? Journey in life, that's a big question, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm Derek. I'm CEO of Coffee and TV, which is a, a UK-based creative studio. We sort of specialise in kind of cool computer-generated uh, visual effects and that kind of stuff. Um journey in life i was i was in a i was a, a sort of in reverse order so prior to being to this to founding this company i was a visual effects artist myself in the in this industry for 25 years or so i think i was quite good at it i thought it was like that was my thing um but i grew up i was born in a one bedroom flat above a green grocer's shop on the a40 which is a big kind of road just on the outskirts of london so um we feel relatively successful compared to where I started, mm. if you see what I mean. So that life journey has uh, it's been fascinating and very fulfilling. And um, yeah, I find myself find myself here. Um, the last so time, happy for I, you, so happy. <laughs> for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy for me too. Um, like to think that I've, it's happened not at the expense of anyone else. I think sometimes success can be seen as a competition. Uh, yes. If you know, if one person wins, the other person loses, and I don't, I'd like to think that my relative success, I still, you know, how it will. I'm sure we'll talk a bit, bit more about what success really means later, but I'd like to think that it has never been at the expense of anybody else, and hopefully, actually, in benefit or service to other people. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've been running coffee and TV for ten years now, and it's been a most. Uh, most transformational period in my life. It's I've had to learn a whole load of new skills and ways of being and coping mechanisms and you know personal development, company development. You know, there's all sorts of all sorts of good stuff. Uh, it's, it's been it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, and I found myself here being invited to talk on your wonderful podcast about success and happiness. So, what could yeah. be better? amazing <laughs> so you're the voice of the creatives in the world then voice of the creatives that, and yeah. and the entre and the i think and the entrepreneurs or the business the, yes. the, or, the, or the enterprising people like there's i think there are there are some amazing creatives who succeed creatively and can succeed in life creatively there's obviously also some very successful business people um and i'd like to think that I've, i'm the but sort of the bridge between those two things or an amalgamation of those two things um and i think just on that point from where coffee and one of one of the things that i think has been the sort of the mark the, the, of, of coffee and tv and the way we've how we've done so well relatively is because in our in our field a lot of our competitors are run by creative people and their output is fantastic but their business structure is not necessarily great and there are other competitors who are run by proper business firms of business people whose structure and profitability is probably quite good, but their creative output and their creative sort of the love for the craft is maybe not as strong. Right. I'd like to think that, my, you know, that, that we are exactly that bridge between those, those two worlds. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, that's, that's Having us. the creative skills and talent and then understanding business and uh, using, you know, this wonderful skill to create this. Why coffee and TV? It sounds really interesting. As a name, so, yeah. Um, we we uh, a couple of reasons. It's it is named after. There's a band called Blur, and one of their famous sing song, uh, singles is called Coffee and TV. And two or three of us of the four founding partners worked on the video for that in another decade in a previous life. Nice. Uh, and, and most of us were Blur fans and just it's kind of cool. Uh, it's very different to the names of our competitors, but actually it's a little bit sort of trying to be humorous because 
a lot of our clients, when they come in, the first thing they actually care about is having a decent cup of coffee before they want to look at the screen and at the TV that we were on the, with the work that we want to show them. So it's kind of a, like, well, as long as the coffee's okay, the TV kind of follows. So it kind of all works in that in that kind of way. So just a bit of a joke, really. <laughs> Beautiful. No, it makes sense. I mean, it's part of your history. You put your heart into a... that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, and I think any anything, any endeavor in life, you know, to make it fully worthwhile, to feel like you've succeeded, you really have to put everything into it, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You need to go 101% at least. Yeah. Not more. Yeah. Yeah. No other way. There's no other way. And yeah. otherwise you feel like you've cheated yourself or, or it's, it's, you know, you don't get that full sense of satisfaction of, of achievement if you haven't really given everything of yourself yeah and it certainly is continuing we're still having to give everything of ourselves even 10 years on so it's uh yeah, it's interesting amazing so what stimulated your creativity um and how did you develop this business acumen as well um i don't think i was very creative from sort of childhood i wasn't one of those draw painters and drawers and you know those properly creative people um i actually i was quite into music but was really i would put myself more down as an academic than a creative person but when it came to university time i kind of found music and mucks around and had great friendship circles and just didn't really work hard enough to get to the university that i had applied for so took a sort of the, the backup vocational option which was the television college um and there were two strains to that there was the kind of the end back in the 80s i guess this was there were there was the engineering side of television you know in terms of soldering irons and yeah. television screens and that kind of stuff right and then there was the making programs to put on the television side of the college which i managed to fortunately fall into uh, and i think actually the creativity came and, and back then like the first jobs were like I started as an assistant editor with big tape machines, reel to reel tape machines that you would kind of, you know, edit with, with, you know, operating, you're basically operating the machine. So it wasn't very creative at that point. It was like, just get the job done. Um, and the, the role evolved. And I think as the role, uh, the, the demands of, uh, of, of what success looked like for the company, I kind of lent into that and found myself becoming more creative um so i feel like i kind of learned creativity on the job really rather than kind of bringing it with me which 25 years later i was certainly doing like really high-end creative work i've did a lot of stuff with george michael and lots of the big rock stars of the world and biggest tv commercials and worked on some of the big feature films you know I've, I've had a good career in creativity and and had to be genuinely creative in order to succeed i guess but I think now looking back on like, because I wasn't, because I had a different experience before the workplace, uh, I can now feel like I can use that. I was quite good. I've always been quite good at learning and understanding text and reading and maths and numbers. And that's all really helped me now when it comes to learning how to run a business. Um, and I realized very quickly once I knew that I had to take over running the business, we started with four of us just being artists and pro like a project team, just doing cool work for cool, a few cool clients. Um, but quickly we, we we kind of grew because we treated people well and it was a bit, of, a bit of a refreshing breath of fresh air in our business to actually look after each other as a, as a team. Uh, so we attracted better artists and better clients and we quickly, quickly grew. Uh, and I realized I was going to have to run the business um, I wanted to write, I wanted that challenge. But it, once I sat in that seat, I realized I literally knew nothing about it. So um, I went, I booked myself back into a business university for us, kind of an intense short residential short course to kind of learn the fundamental basics of what, 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 what running any business, any successful business requires. Um, and from there, I've, it's just been a constant learning journey. Like I've been immersed in wonderful books and podcasts and there's so many you know, now fortunately there's so much content available to to willing learners like me and you know every day you learn something huge and new and it's so exciting so and I, and I love it I should probably have done it years ago um you know I found my new passion you know I'm more passionate about running the business than I ever really was about the creativity if I'm honest mm -hmm. um 
but I'm very, very happy where I am and love what I do. So I'm very lucky. Yeah. So beautiful uh, hearing you reflecting on your past journey. A couple of points I'd like to make. I think when you talk about learning as being the theme of your life, mm. it's uh, in a way it feels like you're learning from the outside world, but it's more about learning about your own limits, about your own abilities, capabilities, potential. So from a psychological perspective, if I'm allowed mm. to just make a little comment, yeah, I think you, you, you have not learned to be creative um, or that as well. But I think what's coming out into me, into my guidance now, it's more like a discovery, a, a, a permission mm. to discover your creativity, to, to tap into it, to connect with it, because it was yes. already there. Yes. You yes. know, but it, it needed a little bit of time to be nurtured and allowed yes. to flourish somehow. Yes. And um, and the, the 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 love for the business side is also amazing because um, you're moving further. You, you you know you want more. It's mm. it's a story of development for you and and personal growth as well and professional growth. So yeah. I loved I loved to 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 listen to you. So now Derek, what is success for you? What's your own definition after you've been through mm. through this amazing journey? That you're sharing with us today um it's a great question and one that since you invited me i've been thinking about quite a lot um success is very uh for, for everybody i think it can be very temporary you know over a, as, as we get older we're aware of the breadth of what, that the shortness of life and you know you can be very successful for a period of your life but at some point if you define success as certainly professional success, you know, one day you retire and then you don't have that success. Does that mean you're no longer successful? And I think that definition needs to be addressed because um, I guess we are conditioned to chase success. And therefore, uh, it's important to make sure that the thing that you're chasing, you know what it is, <laughs> if you see what I mean. So for me, um, it's success a bit like happiness which i guess we'll talk to in about in a minute success is very relative if you come from a you know if you're in a, a poor difficult situation success may well be being able to feed your family or feed yourself or you know maslow's triangle of the you know, hierarchy of needs you know if you can meet that it's very relative depending on where you find yourself at in life's wonderful journey um, and therefore, if we define success as being relative to our current life experience, then I would certainly judge myself to be successful given where I came from and my, my childhood. Um, but I think success for me is actually much more than that. I think I've been able, I've been super lucky to be able to spend some time working on myself and thinking about things like this. Um, and I feel that I feel that my success isn't tied up specifically to my career or my family or indeed even my own personal self journey. I feel now that I can be so grateful and appreciate the life, the wonderful one life that we have, that to me feels like a, an enduring success, that perspective mm -hmm. of feeling like you're if you to be that grateful and you can then share things emotional love money stuff you can share with other people if you're coming from a place of gratitude um and it feels like that appreciation for this wonderful life that we have that is to me enduring success that's something that I like to think can't be taken away so it's not quite so temporary it's not quite so transitory it's a bit more authentic mm -hmm. so that's wonderful in a way what you're saying is success is something that you you connect with you create within yourself in the way you approach life and you you explore your achievements your circumstances how you move through life it's not the success that is conditioned by the external world, which yes, usually exactly. goes around yeah. uh, fame and yeah. money yeah. and being well known yeah. and earning a lot and, you know, yeah. I don't know yeah. affording different things in the material, in the physical world. Yeah. 
Absolutely. You, you, you're talking from uh, from a very spiritual perspective where you're rather connected. You have appreciation. You you operate from a place of love and and service to others. You see yourself yeah. in the world and you, you evaluate success based on that, on how yes, connected exactly. are you and what are you creating? What are yeah. you leaving in the world? What's, you know, what's coming out of you? Not necessarily yeah, exactly. bank account, no, not what's happening yeah. in the bank account only. Yeah. Not that that yes. doesn't matter, obviously, because usually they, they, they are sometimes connected. Um, so you have a much broader definition of success. I think so. I it's think not so. only business related and based on yeah. having goals, achieving the targets and, and you know, moving on to the next stage, to the next level. It's not about expansion and counting it's, physically. No. Yeah. No, it's not. Someone said to me recently about the um the idea of somebody who wants a faster car. You know, one day you aspire to drive a Lamborghini, you know, and then once you've got your Lamborghini, then what do you aspire to? What does success look like for you? Oh, maybe a Bugatti or, you know, like it's a whole, like a never ending quest for, you know, it's the donkey with the carrot on the stick in front of it. As you're walking forwards, it's constantly moving further away from mm-hmm. you. So if your definition of success is chasing something that will never be yours, you'll never be successful and always be frustrated. Um, so I've tried to find a way of understanding, you know, thinking about this conversation, what success means to me. And I feel like currently that's, you know, I'd spent 40 years of my life conditioned to think that success was nice house, nice car, you know, 2.2 children, that kind of stuff. And that, that to me is no longer true. Um, I'll be interested. This is the first time that in in my generation that thoughts like this end up stuck on the internet, right? So I'll be quite keen to look back on this if I'm lucky enough to be here in 10 or 20 years' time. Wonder how that will, this will be a marker of, you know, it feels like if you'd asked me this question 10 years ago, you'd get a very different answer. And I suspect that in 10 years' time, it might be a different answer again. But right now, this feels very authentic and feels like a I've got all the answers, but I know we're just just moving through, aren't we? So, I so much value your your genuineness and authenticity. It's 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 something very vulnerable and touching in the way you you express yourself in a candid way. So we have another uh, uh, appointment in ten years' time and another one in twenty. Right there, we go. go on. Let's hope that. I'm here to do the podcast <laughs> to carry on doing it. And reflect Likewise, back yeah. on this, you know, even one year down the line, it's still important. Um, right. So we agree, both of us, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now concluding that um, we've been all conditioned to imagine that success is something that is visible, countable, measurable in the material world, mm-hmm. uh, connected with the social status and the professional achievements and so on. We agree that, you know, you have achieved success when you feel fulfilled inside. You mentioned gratitude and appreciation for life and, and your mm. journey and your growth, mm. your path uh, that you've been through. I agree with that. Now, what is the link between um, success and happiness in mm. your view? So I'm not sure there is a link, I think, is is where I'm going to get to with that one. Um, happiness... Again, I think, again, it comes down to the definition, right? We can agree. We, I think we need to agree on the definition of, of happiness, or at least we need to set our own definitions. But to me, happiness is, by definition, transitory, temporary. Um, it, I, I find myself a little bit, what's the word, just uncomfortable with the, the woke community who profess to be always happy, right? That doesn't sit well with me because happiness is to me is a little bit like laughter. You know, it's a, it's an accent. It's a moment of joy. It's a, you know, it's, it colors your experience because it's so wonderful. And I think if we try to achieve, pursue that, the goal of happiness, again, it continues to move away from you because it's relative to where you are. It's that accent above, well, you know, above some of the wrong word, but a, an accent on top of where you are in terms of it, you know. So, um, so for happiness for me, it could, you know, you, like I saw, and you've got a great book behind you, The uh, Man's Search for Meaning, right? That depending on where you are, you can be 
in you know naked in the freezing cold in the worst concentration camp and you can still find happiness uh so and you can be the most successful ceo on the yacht on your own in the middle of you know a, a desert island and not have happiness so the life situation i don't think is necessarily linked to happiness or not very strongly linked to happiness obviously it's easier to be happy if you have your basic needs met if you have more than enough money um it's definitely easier to find it but i think again the definition is that it's a color it's an accent it's a it's a moment of joy and beauty and laughter and love on top of your your life exists your life state where wherever you find yourself i love your transpersonal <laughs> you're very deep in the way you explore life you're not stuck in your in your mind at all i mean coming from the world you you you're coming from uh, it does make sense because you you probably permit yourself to express yourself in ways that makes it um present and current and and connect it to 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 this very moment to the here and now uh, yeah. although in the creative world people create when they permit themselves to, to to go through different kind of levels of consciousness through altered states um but it's beautiful so you're you're seeing success and happiness beyond the physicality beyond the material world beyond this physical body and beyond this program mind absolutely you see it yeah. inside the heart the soul whatever i don't know the, the beautiful energy that we carry with us it can be anything and, i think you can yeah. find it in you can find it in stillness in meditation yes. and actually in the creative pursuit so there's a time in the creative process when it's a bit like being in flow i think everything all of the outside distractions have to go away in order to be fully immersed in the creative process and in that space you, all judgment sort of stops and you you can't like as a creative person you can't let judgment your own or anybody else's too broadly affect what you're trying to achieve because you just get weighed down by the pressure of expectation so you have to be open to exploring trying new things and and happiness sits for me somewhere in that in that space mhm mm because as long as you are stuck in your mind in your program mind in what others have downloaded in you right absolutely you, you're not actually connected with your real self and you're not connected yeah. with the others and the world around you with the nature with the beauty of everything with the purity of everything despite the you know the the unpleasantness that we all yeah. face in life despite the hardship that comes with the nature of of human existence we, yeah well, we, or because of you know that's that really gives, yes, that gives yes. you the color and the perspective and the the light and shade right yes um, yes and i love the use of metaphors it, it sounds so great so if if happiness is in the the peacefulness when you connect with yourself when you connect with the creation or you become the creator or the creation at the same time you are both in a way yeah. isn't it because you, yes, you you're absolutely. making your life you and and you are the life as well at the same time yeah. if it's absolutely. not it's not it's not limited to this physical world um if it's not necessarily connected with the new car or the new the bigger house or, or another mm. achievement or another title yeah uh, absolutely can we then say that we misconstrue the success um, as being what is not uh, because of our conditioning mm. and that success can be if we extrapolate a little bit maybe an illusion something yeah. transient that that maybe helps us stay motivated and work towards something uh in a way we contribute to the world with what we bring but ultimately it it can't be found out there and maybe this is uh the case for happiness as well yeah yeah i think that's exactly right um currently i think that's exactly right um yeah it's it's a bit like trying to make someone like you you can't control other people you can't control other people's judgment of you so success if you're measuring it based on other people's judgment of you which is the common common way of measuring it i guess you know it's very difficult and that's probably where a lot of my previous frustrations and people's general frustrations 
lying, trying to impress other people and be judged to be successful. It's, uh, there's, there's no happy ending, I don't think, in that, in, in that way. Um, and so your point, I think, about, um, about your, the world, as you create your own world, right, you create your own reality, um, it, 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 to me, it's the, one of the realizations fairly recently is that the world is outside of us really is just a load of atoms wobbling around, right? So a solid object are closely packed atoms and then there's light bouncing off it, which is perhaps more widely dispersed energy. Like the interpretation of all of these atoms and energy, which is in the world out there, is entirely a, a, a film show being made by your eyes in your with your brain in your in your own reality right so when using my coffee and tv uh, analogy since you seem to like it um when we first saw the first television pictures right beamed across the atlantic by logie baird and we could see someone live or pictures from the moon for example it, we we were thrilled with that sense of wonder that this technology could allow us to see something that's that's real, but it's an interpretation of it from another country or another planet in this case, in case of the moon. And yet every day our brains are interpreting, you know, playing the, a, a whole, you know, a whole universe of reality to our, to ourselves, to our, you know, to our higher self. And we get to experience that all the time. And it's a wonderful thing. And I think we, it's very easy for us to take that for granted and just it, and and that's your baseline for success or happiness but actually if we take a moment just to observe how wonderful just that is just the being alive and being able to see and hear and smell and taste and touch um and any, anything which is basically just atoms and energy you know it's uh it's just very cool and i feel quite successful and happy by being able to recognize that absolutely your reference to quantum physics and and how we learn to understand the world the physical space the, the, you know the empty space around us which is pure energy mm. uh, it, it's it's lovely i think it will resonate in many people because i am i'm i'm observing um an increased openness towards this and this mm. is spirituality really it's about understanding that beyond this physical form that you have there's more there's more that can be seen. There's more that exists, and it's energy. Like the body, the body is ninety nine point ninety nine percent energy, but Absolutely. can't see anything inside. But um, we don't really um, engage with life that way. These are all new concepts for us. We're trying to grasp, and the technology in the digital world is helping us to to compute and make sense and expand our researches. Uh, and our search is in the space as well, <laughs> because now we have dreams about uh, <laughs> populating other planets. Okay, so it's lovely uh, to hear you talking about this. This I I, I didn't expect this. Uh, okay. yeah, it is respectful, but I thought we we're going to talk about the creative world, success, you know, coming from there, not necessarily tapping into a little bit of science and, and mixing them together, because science with religion or spirituality haven't really merged well but now they are starting no. to. Absolutely. And I feel that yeah. in a way you are successful if you are able to expand your perspective and accept more than what you know right now. Because very yeah. often, most of our life comes from our memory, from our database, from what's been already planted there since we are little. Yeah. But that's yeah. not the, the truth. That's not the, the, the true reality. We think it yeah. is. And you're yeah. working now with, with the reality and the virtual world what you're creating out of the reality and how you're presenting it. I don't know exactly how it works in, in, in your branch. I, I don't really understand that, but I would imagine that there's a lot of skill in, in um, creating this metamorphosis from between what you actually film and what you present as a final you know, production, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's... Uh, yeah, absolutely. And some of those discussions amongst the artists is, are also really interesting because again, how some people see and perceive and relate to things can be very different to the person sitting next to them based on not only their current, you know, emotional state, but, you know, childhood stories and all the yes. things that have got everybody to where they're at, you know, that, that, and having an open and frank creative discussion about what something needs to look like or how it can be improved in, like visually or, you know, all of that draws on some of 
some of that learning and some of that interpersonal connectedness. Uh, there's no, in, in my world, that very little is done individually. Like it's very, it's, we're not like um, a famous artist who works on their own. All of our work is teamwork. Yes. Um, and, that, and that dynamic and that sense of interdependence uh, is wonderful to see on a very small team up to the wider company. And, the, you know, that's, it's fascinating to, it's to hear people's different itself, perspectives. Yeah. That's the yeah. success itself. Uh, yeah. Being able Absolutely. to create a, yeah. that, yeah. you know, amazing result. Yeah. So now if you would go back to talk to your 18 year old self, uh, hmm. earlier version of yourself, mm. what would you say to him? To maybe spare some suffering or or I don't know help him to to feel more at ease within mm -hmm. if possible and feel reassured that the success will come and mm -hmm. and the journey in life will unfold naturally and will will allow for a much richer life experience yeah I, th I think it's that actually you've just said it I think the for me personally because I'd come from a pretty poor childhood not not poor just financially poor yes. um i i was i spent a lot of my career just trying to my, make myself financially secure i was i was worried my my big driver was to not go back into poverty um and now that i've been lucky enough to uh, have pretty much achieved that really really i've been able to invest a bit more in my myself and my own in my own growth personal growth and that sense of, if, firstly, a positive mindset, right? Growth mindset is the thing that I think is the, tr that was the sort of transformational part from, of me. From a, I, I kind of grew up with a reductionist, like make everything safe, make sure, eliminate the negatives before you take any risks or move forward. Um, having a much more positive outlook creates more opportunity, creates more wealth and emotional connection and you know all, all, all the good stuff um and, and i think nowadays everyone talks a lot of people talk about an abundant mindset and i think you know it's i, I don't believe in the in the woo side of if you just believe it it will happen right i don't think we can i don't currently believe that we can necessarily manifest magic in that way that some people talk about but actually having the mindset that you can moves you some way in that direction so uh, to my 18 year old self, I would definitely, tr I would e explain like, if, you know, it, it's the, it's the belief system, isn't it? It's if you could prove that it's going to be okay, that would take away so much negative energy and pressure, which would allow you to flourish even more. Um, but of course, an 18 year old is not going to believe it when some yes. old wrinkly 54 year old turns up and says, don't yes. worry, Derek, it's going to be OK. It's like, well, what if it's not? And you have that, you know, that friction, that tension. And that is uh, that's limiting. That's so you yes. know, that's, it, it doesn't help. It's not helpful. So to help that young man choose to let go of, of those limiting beliefs, I think that would be the key. But that's that's the work of amazing psychologists and coaches like yourself, right? And it's the the journey in life. It's the inner work that you're doing as a human being going through life, whether you see yeah. psychologists or therapists or not. You are on a path of transformation, mm -hmm. of self discovery, of healing, and obviously of personal growth. Mm -hmm. And I feel that this is kind of a tricky and futile questions to ask ourselves sometimes because we are not ready to talk yeah. to our previous versions at the time. Yeah. Of course, we yeah. can talk to them right now as we've obviously uh, reached some wisdom and and we feel more um, able to have that dialogue mm. but I, I feel that um, the way you understand success and happiness um, uh, touches my heart in a way because I started from humble you know um, origins myself mm. and um, what's been a constant in my life it was self-belief I never doubted myself for one second. Did, did your parents help to instill that in you or did you find that independently? No, I think it came from my grandparents that brought me up for the first seven years of life. They were different, uh, completely different to my, my parents and other members of the extended family. So I had that little support that probably was, you know, uh, life deciding for me. Mm -hmm. 
and I cherish their memory. And this is what I'm taking. I don't know how much is genetic, how much is already, you know, in our genes. Yeah. It's an evolutionary memory from our ancestors. How much is my sure. karma? If this is what I'm yeah. choosing for myself in this life, irrespective of what's happening around me. Sometimes yeah. I go like I'm, you know, like I, I, I don't see, I don't hear. I'm very decided. I'm very convinced that this is me and this is what I want yeah. to do. So it's interesting how we reflect back on our journeys and how much we discover every single day and how beautiful this journey is because mm -hmm. it always unfolds. It never ends. And this is, yeah. for me, this is the, this is the happiness in life to be able to remain curious, to re be able to remain connected with myself, to be able to accept that. I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, even if I pretend I know something right now, it's, yeah. it's, it's relative. I might change yeah. this tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be a new me that comes with so, a different yeah. life experience yeah. and so on. So um, we are very much alike in, in the way we look at life and we make sense of our journey in life. And there is a connection between success and happiness, but I think it's, it's, it's a very subjective one, as you mentioned. It's about what you make of it. And, and I think the theme of, of the discussion, everywhere we go, we're actually talking about awareness, how important awareness is, Absolutely. you know, uh, to really be in the present and in this moment and operate from your best self, not from, yeah. from the memory, from those yeah. alleys of experience that you've used to naturally, automatically function. Yeah. And this yeah. is what's making the change, I think. Um, sometimes you meet people that are so-called very successful, very well known, and they don't have financial worries. Mm. And yet they, they feel the emptiness. They feel that longing for something more. Yeah. And what is yeah. that more? It's actually something within already yeah. that they yeah. are searching for and they are trying to connect with, but it's yeah. not easy. You can't teach it really. It's, it's everyone's journey, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it comes to you when you're ready for it. I think. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I think you, we you are. Can't force it on anyone else. No. Yeah. No, if you're not ready to hear that, you can have the the wiser person in the world coming yeah. to guide you and lead absolutely. you somewhere. I yeah. see it with myself as a as a client in therapy myself. I see it with my clients as well. You you feel it. You feel the person when they are ready because they act on it. They mm. are present to it. They engage with it. Otherwise, it yeah. just goes. Yeah. And it's, it's, not, it's fine. We yeah. need to be kind and compassionate towards ourselves and the others and appreciate right. that this is our level. This is our journey. Yeah. Right? This is where we yeah. function right now. But also yeah. empower others all the time and share our stories so they can really feel encouraged to permit themselves, permit their program minds to believe that there is more than this yeah. and remain yeah, open yeah. to happiness. <clears throat> Because very often people that I chat with on this topic mm -hmm. acknowledge, just like you, you can't really be happy all the time. Your inner state is 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 very changeable. You know, it's always transforming. It, it's always going up and down. And that's the nature of life. That's the natural flow. Fine. Yeah. But remaining yeah. open to happiness, not closing yourself, mm -hmm. remaining mm -hmm. in a state of expansion. And, yeah. and, and openness to life, to experience, and learning from everything that comes. Us. Sometimes it feels like punishment, but it's not. It's just a little bit of a learning, as you mentioned. It's teaching us something. I think that's the key. Knowing yeah. that it's not going to be like this forever. Being, yeah. being able to retain that response ability. You have the ability to respond. You can go into the, the deepest, I don't know, holes of, of despair. Uh, or you can lift yourself up if you wish, yeah. irrespective of what's going on around. Absolutely. I think that's my my version of success. That's how I see mm. it. This is why yeah. I cherish happiness, not in a way of making it as your goal in life, but as your constant presence, which mm. is the connection with yourself where you find the peace. Yeah. <clears throat> So yeah. now towards the end, Derek, wow, we're starting from somewhere and look where we're going now. It's beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? To talk about creativity and happiness and success and business and achievements. What's your last um, word towards our watchers and listeners? 
best tips that you capture through life? What can they do? Uh, let's meet them where they are. What's your message to them? Yeah, I think it's to meet people where they are. I think it's mindsets, right? So you can actually work with a mindset that's, you know, everyone has trauma and experiences that don't help them grow or move forward. And from a, I've got an amazing coach who's helped me to come out of my mind, come out of intellectualizing a problem and actually go into the heart and to feel it. But that's been a, a journey of work. And I don't think it's fair to expect people who haven't had the opportunity to experience that level of coaching or awareness to be able to go straight there. So I would suggest, invite, I guess, the idea that your past is a choice, whether you take it forward with you, and to be able to consciously choose what's helpful to you from your past. Like the past has happened, right? You can't do anything about it. It's it's done, right? There's All you can do is choose what's helpful from it for you to take forward and what's helpful to leave behind. Um, and I think, and that's an exercise you can do logically, mentally. Um, you don't have to be awakened and all spiritual to do that. I think you can use your life, your, your, your intellect to decide what's happened to you before, whether you're going to let it affect you or whether you can let it go so that you can create space for new opportunities, for new learning, for new beginnings. Um, so I would encourage people to make that choice and to choose happiness, right? You can actually choose it. So lovely. You you talk like a mentor yourself. <laughs> yeah, like you're mentoring okay. others and you have this uh, ability, this skill, this talent to reach out to people's hearts so they can feel inspired by, by your experience at the end of the day you bring yourself into this you bring your life experience uh, oh, you've been you. there yourself where can people find out more about you and your work and the coffee and tv maybe youngsters that uh, look at you as a role model people that are creative people that might be potential clients i don't know or uh, people that have loved you know engaging with you in this uh, podcast episode and would love to hear a bit more well um the company website is coffeeand.tv, so you can follow the work that we do and some of the stories. And we start to post some of the, uh, the behind-the-scenes things that we, you know, some of the thinking and you know some of the other stuff, other than the shiny stuff that we produce. We start to, some of the stuff is on there, and you can probably contact me through there. Um, but you can contact me on LinkedIn. That's my kind of that's my social media home. Um, yeah, Derek Moore, LinkedIn CEO of Coffee and TV. You'll find me. Um, if you write me a kind and loving message, I will respond. <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek. It's been such a such a wonderful conversation. I wish we could continue because I had some questions to ask, but we stayed on the topic. I didn't want to derail. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Much appreciated. Absolute, absolute pleasure. It's uh, lovely to have a conversation like this that's not quite so business focused. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you.